So this project is not a typical project. This is going to be a restoration project. Deb's going to do all the refinishing on it. I'm just going to be doing the joinery to make the table a lot more solid. So this table is a, it's a pine table and it's been in the family since... 67. So Deb knows a little bit of the details about where the, the origins of the table somewhat. So in 1967, my ex-mother-in-law, Susan, purchased this table before heading out to university. It's been in the family. It was their dining room table for quite a number of years. When I went to university, we took this table as well. It's always been a little bit wobbly, and so we're going to try and fix that and do a refinish on it because that's never been done in the uh, number of years that I've had it as well. So. So being an, an older style table, um, I, we don't know the exact origins, but it could be a Sears and Roebuck. Some of the joinery on it is somewhat questionable. So it has had, somebody has had a bit of a go at it, trying to tighten up some of the, the leaves and whatnot, just by adding newer screws to it that were oversized. Our plan is basically, we're gonna be taking it apart. We're going to be adding some joinery, which currently doesn't really exist. It's got wobbly legs and little corner brackets to, to hold the legs on and corner brackets that are holding some of the parts in that are just basically all screwed in. So we're gonna add some joinery. We're gonna actually do some domino joinery to it and glue and screw um, the pieces back together. However, we're going to attempt to keep it looking period correct in that we'll source the, the proper type of screws or the proper looking screws. And even though stuff will be glued in place and have proper joinery, all that's going to be hidden. So it still looks like the original table. So once we're done, it should be solid, uh, dependable and good to use. And we're not going to worry about it, it collapsing. And Deb's going to refinish it a slightly different color. So the next step is to do a bit of disassembly, and which is a fairly easy process with these tables that were assembled so they can be easily shipped by taking the legs off because all that holds it on is basically a screw assembly. No joinery at all. One of the reasons why it was really wobbly. It's going to be kind of hard to see in the video. However, because this table slides, the only mechanism that holds it in place is basically these runners here. And they have been all become loose. And this is the part, part where oversized screws were put in it. So it's going to be really simple process to remove the top just by removing these runners. And the top should come right off or disattach from the base. Do all these by hand so as to salvage, not damage the screw hole so much. At the end of the day, we're going to glue these runners back in place. I know it'll be a permanent solution. I'll never get them apart, but it'll also be very much stronger. the base removed from the two top sections. So you can kind of see how that sliding mechanism would work. If we wax it up really well, it'll slide apart really good. You can also see the looseness in this joinery. All that's holding this together is basically these metal tabs right in here with two screws, one on each end and these angle blocks here with screws in either side one screw per piece of wood and it's just so sloppy loose it's a wonder this table held together at all so the plan is is that we're going to domino and glue everything together so it will be solid we'll still put the metal pieces back in to keep the originality of the piece I was going to say the table is about as part as it needs to come. Except I noticed on the side rails here that these actual rail retainers where the top slides in are loose. That's because they're only nailed into the support board. 
Hmm, I think that's going to have to come apart. We're going to have to glue that too, unfortunately. But that's life. That's the side rails. The end rails are out. As many of the blocks of wood that fell off, because some of them had some weird ass glue on it. And the center folding section. And we've got the two leaf sections that are of the top that are apart. So Deb can actually start doing some refinishing on the top now while I carry on with doing the joinery. So just like that, the sliding mechanism is disconnected from the side rail. They even managed to salvage the appropriate nails. I'll reuse those once we glue it into place. We're at the point now where we got to start the sanding process. The table's all completely disassembled. It uh, took a little bit of care and finesse to get it apart without doing much damage to it, but it came apart fairly easily. So the next step in the process, Deborah's going to take over and she's going to sand the, the table, all the bits and pieces that we've uh, taken it down apart to. And for the rough surfaces that need any leveling, we're going to lock up uh, the Festool RO125 FEQ in the Rotex. And then we're going to switch it into the random orbital on my little sander. And uh, Deb's going to complete all the sanding process. There's your little sander, Deb. And it is the littler of the versions. There are others. They're bigger and that, but this one's plenty big enough for my hands. That's what she said. to make a confession here. I glued it together once and then I had to painstakingly cut it apart again because the process that I used just didn't cut it. Dan messed up and I learned my lesson. So I had to assemble it all as one piece and the glue up was funky and difficult and hard but it's all glued together. Ta-da! Here it is. It's all sanded. It's all glued and screwed back together. Just waiting for the staining process. Um, the top still comes off so that we can stain it appropriately. 
um, and get inside everything to, to apply the stain to all the various places that we need. We're going to use the Verathane gel stain. Uh, the the flavor, the color, is uh, Cabernet. Um, I'm a wine girl, so this uh, appeals to me for that reason, and uh, should be a nice deep red kind of color, and hopefully works into the rest of our kitchen. And then what are we doing after the gel stain? Yeah, after the gel stain, we have this antique varnish. It's a paste varnish uh, that we'll be applying uh, once we get our color to the right uh, depth of uh, that we're looking for. Okay, Miss Chardonnay girl. Chardonnay? Cabernet. Cabernet. Miss Cabernet girl. We've got the um, Cabernet paste applied to it, and we've got the depth of color that we that we want. How many coats did you put on? Just one. Just one coat. We had to be real careful with the top because it showed some of the really fine scratches um, pretty significantly, so we had to go to a 240 grit to make sure that once we put the Cabernet coloring on, it uh, was appropriate. So some really good work by Deborah. So going forward, what we have to do next is... Apply our antique paste varnish. Oh. Uh, so we're going to do two coats of this and uh, buff up and allow the time in between. And uh, mostly to provide that protection for the top surface of our table. So why are we using the antique paste varnish? A couple of reasons. Because it's highly water resistant and, and alcohol resistant. So. There may be some Cabernet, no, some alcohol spilt and some water spilt. Seeing that it is, it's going to be our kitchen table. So yeah, like Deb says, definitely one coat uh, or two coats and we'll go from there and see how much shine we want to put on it. Yeah, I'm excited. Needs wax. All right, this is take two because I forgot to turn the microphones on for take take one. Deb, this is the part where we talked and tell the details. That about, microphone. Yeah, TV. that microphone. <laughs> anyway, Mr. Squeaky, that's out.